So let's get right to the question. Do sanctions work, Gary? Well, there's a feel-good element to sanctions, and in that sense, they nearly always work. But there's a do-good aspect, and that's what we studied in three editions of our book, Economic Sanctions Reconsidered. And we would say, my co-authors and I, that they do good in terms of changing the policies of the target government about one-third of the time. So, yes, that's not bad for diplomacy, but it's certainly not 100 percent. And the one-third is heavily weighted towards cases which probably no one has heard of or very few have heard of, where the goal was pretty modest, pretty modest by, uh, by the standards of the United States and sometimes even not the United States being the proponent of sanctions. Where the goal is tough, that is, removing a dictator in a hardened autocratic country who's protected by secret police and so forth, that's, that's tough. The success rate is very low, probably less than a fifth of the time. So that's kind of a broad assessment. Um, if you're going to feel embarrassed as a president not doing anything, yes, sanctions in that sense work. They show the American public that, you're, that you are taking action, as President Reagan did when he briefly put sanctions against Russia after it shot down that, uh, that uh, Korean plane you may remember quite a while ago. But of course, Russia didn't change in that case, but it was certainly a feel-good policy of the moment. And Mark, I guess you feel that uh, sanctions absolutely do work. Well, I do, Ralph. I mean, I think sanctions don't work except in cases where they do. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, in a sense, uh, sanctions are not a silver bullet, but they may be silver shrapnel. And shrapnel can also wound a regime that's suffering a severe economic crisis or a crisis of domestic legitimacy. When we're dealing with the threat of nuclear proliferation and the support for terrorism, we don't have a choice between good and bad options. We have a choice between bad and worse options. And I think war is the worst option. Sanctions give us a peaceful alternative, and I think in conjunction with uh, intrusive inspections and tough diplomacy and the credible threat of military action, they have worked. And they've worked in cases like Libya and Iraq. They've slowed down their nuclear programs, in some cases terminated it. They've undermined uh, Milosevic's Serbia. And so they have worked. And I think they, a commitment to sanctions, multilateral, strict enforcement with uh, international unanimity I think can bring down not only the Iranian regime, but at least can stop the Iranian regime's march to a nuclear bomb. Before we talk about Iran further, and we do want to do that, give me a quick definition. What do we mean when we say sanctions? We're talking about uh, taxation, we're talking about trade. What kind of, what are things, so give us some examples of sanctions. Well, ec economists tend to focus just on the economic aspect of sanctions, which is very important. But there's also a moral dimension to sanctions. Sanctions are very useful in helping name and shame. They put the target country on the defensive. And it's a fundamental principle of strategic communications. He who is explaining is losing. And it helps change the narrative from an engagement with a rational regime to crippling an odious regime. So in that respect, moral sanctions can play a very useful role in focusing attention on the human rights abuses of these regimes and their threat to international security. 